leather is generally sold one of two ways, by the square foot and by the part for a fixed price. Let's start with leather sold by the square foot. If you're buying from a vendor that sells by the square foot, you'll see pricing laid out something like this, say $5.50 per square foot or $9.75 per square foot. Now typically, you'll have to buy the whole piece of leather as they've chosen to part it out. For example, they may have already taken the whole hide and cut it into smaller parts and are offering those specific parts for sale at a price specified per square foot. Uh, back up, Megan, you lost me. Okay, let's break it down. Say I want chrome tan leather and I want the bend portion of the hide. I find a bend at a leather vendor where I see the price listed as $5 per square foot. Now, where are you gonna find the price listed? Well, if you're shopping online, they'll have it listed or direct you to contact them for pricing. If you're at a brick and mortar location, Sometimes they'll have a sticker on each side with the price per square foot, or maybe a sign posted next to the leather indicating the price. And sometimes you have to ask the vendor for, each, for the price. Each vendor varies in how they display pricing. For this example, the vendor has the price of $5 per square foot displayed on a sign next to the leather. I get excited because I know that I only need two square feet for my project. So that should only be like $10, right? $5 per square foot times two square feet, $10. Technically, yes, but usually they're not going to cut it down exactly to what I need. So I would have to buy the entire piece. And if the entire bend is 13.3 square feet, then I'd be paying 13.3 square feet times $5 per square foot, which is $66.50 for the entire bend. That's a lot more than 10 bucks. Megan, when I'm shopping, how do I know how many square feet each piece is? Great question. Oh, you are so smart. When you're looking at a piece of leather, turn it over to the flesh side. That's the underneath side, typically the roughest of the two sides. Remember that from module two. And somewhere on the flesh side, usually close to an edge, you'll find numbers like this. Now those numbers reflect the total square feet on that particular piece of leather. Here are a few more examples. Some vendors print those numbers on the hide and others may actually write them on the hide. Each leather supplier is unique, so if you're shopping and you can't find the total square feet represented on the leather, don't be afraid to ask an employee where they put that information on their leather. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Now I just found a vegetable tan side. Let's say the vendor is selling this for $7.50 per square foot. I see that the hide says 229, which is really 22.9 square feet. So with a quick calculation, 22.9 square feet times $9.50 per square foot, I know that I'll be paying $217.55 for this piece of leather. Got it? We'll do one more just in case. So I'm still shopping because shopping for leather makes me happy. And I find this oiled chrome tan side. I think this might be a great fit for my specific project. And they're asking $11 per square foot for this leather. 
Now, it's a side of leather, so I know it's going to be a decent size. When I look at the flesh side, I see that this number, 281, which I know is equivalent to 28.1 square feet. So if I want this side of leather, I'm paying $11 per square foot times 28.1 square feet, which is $309.10. Do you see why it's important to know what leather works best for your project? If you just randomly visit a leather supplier and just guess, you could easily spend several hundred dollars on one piece of leather just testing this stuff out before you really start to understand which leather is the best for you. And once you cut into that leather, you can't take it back. And if you make the wrong guess a few times, you could shell out thousands of bucks on leather that you don't even need. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience here. <sighs> anyway, let's move on to the second way leather is commonly sold. And that's by the part. And by part, I mean one of the parts that we learned about back in module two, like a side or a shoulder or a back or, you know, all of those. Feel free to refer back to your parts of the hide diagram in case you need a refresher. Some leather suppliers sell for a set price per piece. Basically, this is a simplified pricing strategy where each piece of leather is sold for the same price, regardless of the total square feet. For example, the leather supplier may sell all their chrome tanned bellies for 25 bucks. If that's the case, a belly that's seven total square feet will cost the same as a belly that's four total square feet. If you're working with a supplier that sells by the part for a set price, you can often get a good deal on larger, larger hides, since the larger ones are the same price as the smaller ones. Now here's an example. These are two veg tanned sides. One is 22.9 square feet. We'll round up and call it 23 square feet just to make things easy. And the other is 29.2 square feet. For this example, we'll just call it 29 square feet. If the vendor is selling all their veg tan sides for $200, then in this case, I'd be paying the same price for the larger 29 square foot side as I would for the 23 square foot side. That's a difference of six square feet for the same price. Just remember, bigger isn't always better. You want to make sure that the actual hide meets your needs. We'll talk more about that in module four, but for now, just know that by the square foot and by the part for a fixed price are the most common ways that leather is sold. Good news! There's no leather work assignment for this lesson. The next step is figuring out how much leather you actually need for your project. And we'll work through that in the next lesson. I'll see you there.